Hello everyone, I'm John Algets, and in previous videos, we took a look at two maps that I produced for Ramp 2024, the Dimensional Gateway and Incursion Point. In today's video, we're running through the last map that I produced for the project, Homecoming. We're gonna be going through it twice, once in a standard ultra violence playthrough and the other time with all of the monsters stripped out so that I can give you all of my thoughts on the design, on the layout, everything that I was thinking when I put it together. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. All right, so as usual, the map starts kind of where the last one left off. We've stepped off of the teleporter that we stepped on at the end of Incursion Point and we're still in ancient Egypt. Uh, at least for the moment here. We have our super shotgun in front of us. We open this door and we have this nice segment, this nice section where it looks like uh, there was maybe a cave-in or something. Something destroyed this segment of the temple. I mostly just put that there because honestly, this wall uh, in this room felt very empty because fun fact about this room, uh, this room may look somewhat familiar if you played Incursion Point, the previous level, because I actually like took a room from that level and put it, like modified it and put it in this place because I needed to build a new section for this map. Uh, and uh, this is actually in Incursion Point. This is where the plasma rifle spawned. You had two shotgunners up here and you would jump off down here to get to the water segment. Uh, but I just put in a wall. I, we had the door here where it was originally. It's just, I just borrowed a room, which is perfectly fine uh, as long as you're modifying it. And honestly, it's one of those things where I feel like if I didn't tell you that, you might not have even noticed. Uh, but because this wall felt empty, I put in this little thing here. And also it gave me a place to put the chain gun because I wanted you to start with the chain gun. Uh, now we're gonna jump down here and we're gonna run down this hallway. We have our ubiquitous monsters. Uh, the shotgunner and the imps. Uh, we open up this door and, oh, hey, it's a hell knight. Uh, do some do some door fighting. As I said in the last video, I'm trying to move away from sort of uh, level design that encourages door fighting, but I am struggling with it just a little bit, but I'm, 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 I'm gonna figure it out. Uh, so we come to this and we have this teleporter and we know that this is a portal because it shares the same design language that we saw in the last two levels for the portal. Uh, looking at our map, we see that we've got this thing and it's plugged in to this console. Now this is not a standard doom button, but this exists here to teach the player to look for these buttons because this will come up later. Uh, so we're gonna hit that. We're gonna use E on that and it opens up the door. Now, uh, we travel through this portal and we are on a different part of the map. There is actually a, um, well, you know what? I'll talk about this later. There's, there's, there's a portal there. That's all you need to know. Pick up some stuff, run around, blast these guys. We have a blue key door, so we have to go get the blue key. Do, 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 blast some fools. We got the chain gunner. This imp that won't die for whatever reason. And now we get to do a little bit of room over room. Accomplished using portals. Uh, that's thinking of portals. Portal joke. All right. Moving on. Blasting through this room. Uh, as with the last level, the Egypt level, this... This map is made up of large segments of a uh, map that I was making for last year's ramp. That's our introduction to the Revenant, by the way. Uh, for last year's ramp that I didn't manage to finish, that have been repurposed for a level in ramp 2024. Uh, so yeah, all of the Egypt stuff that you saw at the beginning was new content that was created to bridge this map together with the previous one and to give us a proper introduction. Because this portal right here uh, would lead to the main central hub of that level that I was working on. I actually did a playthrough of that of the incomplete level um, on an episode of Bitrate, which is the uh, usually weekly podcast that I do with my buddy Ash. Uh, so you can go back and I believe there's a VOD of that on Twitch. You can watch it. Um, 
if you're curious. We come through here, we cross over to Lime Death, and it starts this big battle set piece that's spawning in all of these enemies. It's also our introduction to the Arachnatron. Uh, get us a, a hidden rocket launcher. It's not very well hidden, but it is technically hidden. Um, and most welcome in this fight. It just absolutely shreds. Uh, come over here, get this blue. This is like a, a modern city location that we have traveled to now, but it's very much polluted. We've got like a gross green sky. We've got all of the, the gross, like toxic air hanging. Uh, I'm assuming that the doom guy, you know, he's wearing a, he's wearing a, his doom guy helmet. He probably, you know, it's got air purifiers and stuff. Open that up and we go into this building across the street. Uh, because we, that's, that's what the, the level calls for. Uh, Blast Fools, now we have a yellow key door that we have to get. Open up. We've got Mancubus in here in this, like, smaller arena, as well as some chain gunners. Blast those fools. An imp. And we have some bars here. And the yellow key's behind the bars. So let's go up. And this is where you get the rocket launcher outside of the secret. You can see the the area with the bars down there. We flip the switch. Oh, hey, the bar's lowered. Let's go get that key. Oh, there's a spectral pinky demon uh, that was that was hiding in here. We When I went up to the bars and looked, you could kind of see it. Uh, but yeah, spectral, spectral demon. So now we have the yellow key. Let's move along. We got some, some hell knights in here. I really wanted to uh, move away from the, the tech base feel, keep it feeling very urban because we are in an urban location, but this does feel vaguely tech base -y. But to me, like I went with slightly brighter colors than I normally use um, and just, you know, it's a little bit of a brighter location. To me, this feels Almost borderline corporate. The crates kind of screw that feel up a little bit. I, m I might do that differently. But now we're going to go down this very long elevator into uh, an area that, as I was developing it, in my head, I kept referring to it as CV-11's uh, favorite location. It is, we've gone underground, so that can mean only one thing. Uh, we are heading into the required by law sewer section insert sewer count graphic here uh yes we are we are now under the city we're back in kind of a is there anything i miss uh, we got some ammo uh we are in this very toxic sewer there is water down there uh and this is this is a lot of a lot of spawn triggers in through here because if i just had the enemies hanging out because this is such like a open uh open environment if i just had all of the monsters spawned in when i initially when you initially run in you would just have a, a big firefight um but then i wouldn't be able to control the pace of the encounters or anything like that so using using spawn triggers is a good way to handle that um dealing with a lot of caco demons caco demons i'm i use them a lot more in this context because they can fly is really what it comes down to um, because this is a location that is a little bit harder to navigate. It's a little bit of a tighter, uh, play area. So having, you know, I'm restricting the player's movement. And so to give the enemies an advantage, just use, use enemies that can fly. They don't have the disadvantage that the player does with this being a tighter locale. Um, there is, uh, lots of stuff to pick up. And we have a couple of offshoot rooms. Uh, this is the first of them blast our way through this actually leads us to a pickup that we need for uh one of the secrets of the level actually if we do it quickly it'll be used for two um that is our our radiation suit it itself is not a secret but um it will help us get a secret uh if i can kill all of these things before the timer on the rad suit runs out because we have to go swimming uh, you know what? I don't have patience for you. So you can get plasmid. 
Uh, and I'm going to jump down. And we are, we're swimming. This is a, a rather deep, toxic pool. It does hurt when I'm not using the rad suit. And we get a hidden berserk pack. Uh, I don't believe that I trigger any of the spawns going that way. No, it doesn't. You have to, they're front-facing only uh, walkover lines. Um, I did that because I wanted, again, controlling the pace of the combat encounters, which is important. Um, so blasting the revenants. I ran out of, uh, radiation suit before I was able to pick up that secret. There's a little megasphere down in there. Everybody loves megaspheres. I am hurting on ammo. This might not be a great, uh, great encounter. This is a red key. It opens up a pair of monster closets. There's one on the other side, and it's a fairly big fight. Um, you can kind of cheese it by doing what I did. Um, I should have probably lowered the walls here, because they are blocking my shots quite a bit. Um, because the monsters might be effectively infinitely tall, but the... the the walls can still be a problem. Um, so there we go. That guy's, honestly, that is the fight that I worry about the most. Um, but we came out pretty okay. And we have the red key now, so we can go... I believe I, that was a spawn trigger. Yep. I believe this is a pain elemental spawn, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, there it is. Because, again, flying enemies give our opponents a advantage that the player themselves does not have. Uh, now, one thing that I want to talk about that is a, a design element is the placement of the door, like the entry into this area and the red key door. As you may have noticed when we walked into the sewer, uh, we could immediately, the very first thing that we could see was the red key door. Uh, Again, we are giving our player a objective to work towards, something to uh, motivate them moving forward. Like they know where it is that they have to go and they know what their goal is. Uh, and so they, they have something that they are working towards to achieve. If any of that makes sense. I don't know if I'm rambling, but I think it makes perfectly, perfectly solid sense. Uh, oop, oop. Oop. Oh, bugger. I, I, I tend to not like pain elementals. I believe in a previous video I pointed out that they are just a monster that I don't particularly like using. Um, because to me they're not very fun to fight. Uh, and Lost Souls are the majority of the reason for that. Um, because Lost Souls may be the single most annoying enemy introduced in a boomer shooter. Uh, pretty dang close. So, yeah, there's the door that we entered through, and here's the red door with a pinky behind it. Now, in that old unfinished level, uh, remember in the last level I pointed out that the goal was to flip four switches in four separate environments to open up one door that led to the end? This is where the switch for this segment was but now there's a teleporter and it takes you to this all new location that was made specifically for this ramp release it's like a uh uh i modeled it to look like an apartment complex here is a use of design language so because this this area is built to look like an apartment complex that means a lot of doors uh, but I didn't want to have a lot of individual apartment complexes because I feel like that just would have made navigation tedious. So I have two different looking doors. And as we play through this area, you will notice, you will notice this, but there's the door that we can open and it looks like that. And it has white lights above it. And then there's a door that we can't open, which is not as colorful. It's grayed out and it has red light. And when we go up to it and try to use it, it just says locked. There's no way to open any of those doors. Uh, and I used the look of the door to sell, to sell the message of don't bother trying to open it. This door, however, we can open. Uh, so we blast. Anyways, I started blasting. 
Uh, more door fighting, which isn't stupendous. Uh, the, here we have it. There's our BFG for the level behind some bars that we can't open. So let's run out here. Big hallway fight. Again, we have more locked doors. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Hold, please. Okay, anyways, um, I may have had to have cheated to get back here a little bit, but the show will go on. Uh, dying in your own level is only moderately embarrassing. Uh, and then having to cheat to get back up is even worse. I don't even know why I admitted it. Uh, anyways, yes, so here's our BFG. Uh, let's continue on. Blast all them fools. All right, well, that's a dead everything. Uh, all right, we come down here. We get all those. We open this up. Ah, more Arachnotrons. That one goes down quick. So, again, this is meant to be, like, sort of a an apartment complex-like location. So this very much feels like a, like a living room or maybe an office. Uh, we've got a, a Baron in here who is, uh, not very happy. Uh, we have to get through these bars. Let me flip the switch. And it definitely opens up these bars. And we can actually end the level right here if we wanted to. Uh, but we don't want to. Although, let's take a moment to admire the desk. And again, remember how I said I was training you to, to use those buttons? Look, there's a button. Uh, now, if you notice when I flipped that switch, it said a gate opened somewhere. Uh, that is the game letting us know that that room where the BFG was locked is open. Picking up this BFG does a few things, though. Um, well, okay, it does one main thing. It Obviously, it's a secret. Uh, but also it spawns the secret boss of the level back in the other room. Uh, yeah. Because this is such tight quarters, I am going to turn on God mode for this. Just because actually getting into this room is the biggest challenge of the whole fight. The fight itself is fine because I gave you the BFG right before. Uh, but getting in the room, I find myself probably nine times out of ten, I die pretty quickly after opening that door because the cyber demon will just spam rockets at my face. Um, but that's sort of like my mean secret boss. You didn't have to go back and get the BFG. I'm sort of punishing the player for being greedy, especially in something like ramp where you don't get to keep the BFG after you beat the level. It kicks you back to the hub with no weapons. Uh... So I don't know why you felt like you needed to be uh, so greedy to go get the BFG. But I was like, you know what? You get punished with a boss battle. But with that, Homecoming is finished. Uh, let's go ahead and dive into it without any monsters so that you can take a look at the uh, finer points of its design. Okay, so here we are. Um, I already told you about this Egyptian area, about how it's... Uh, very much just meant to link the two levels together. Uh, I will point out this little, like, you can actually climb up this uh, sort of caved-in section. And there is more of the tunnel back over there. Uh, I made sure to make it to... I could have just had it be a straight corridor because basically nobody's going to think to jump up there. But it does actually whine and it is like a proper cave. Um, let's dive in here and take a look. Uh, there is like, you know, a little bit more shape to it. I, I varied up the elevation a little bit just to, just so that if you do climb up there and you do take a look down here, uh, it, you know, it looks more natural. Uh, did I have to do that? No, not in the slightest, but small details, uh, small details like that very quickly pile up and become, uh, big things over time. 
Uh, anyways, so we have this this portal here. We open this up. I I love the the cord specifically. I'm trying to remember what that red texture is. I believe it's the red comp texture. Um, that to me, it just it works as a cord. That is like the world's shortest cord, by the way. Cause like, look at how little slack that cord has and it doesn't curl up. It doesn't spiral or nothing. No, that cord is like six feet long. It's a very short cord. Uh, random computer bits and the switch. So here we have an eternity portal. I believe that's what it's called. Uh, uh, line def portal. Uh, the reason why I did this was specific, like, honestly, I didn't need to. It fit thematically that there be a portal there because it is a portal. Um, but I didn't need to actually use a portal there, except for the fact that, as I pointed out earlier, this map goes under that room. Uh, and so using portals like that is one way that you could trick Doom, because, again, the Doom engine does not allow for room over room. It is one of the limitations of the engine, and even GZ Doom doesn't re remove that limitation unless you're using uh, some tricks to do it, like 3D floors, or in this case, uh, portals to, you know, trick it. Uh, so again, this section here was old, was the old level, the one from the previous year. Uh, and that Egypt section is all new content that was created. So if I was going to actually physically connect the Egyptian segment with the modern world segment, uh, I would have had to have redesigned this lower area and just, it, it could have done it, but this is one situation where my laziness actually had me doing a more complicated technique than the far simpler but more time-consuming option of redesigning the area. This, I will say, this outdoor area is one of the reasons, one of the problems that I ran into with the initial build of this level last year that made me have to abandon the project. Because this sky needed to be green to make sense for all of the, like, gross you know, toxic air, but I didn't want the skies in the other segments of that larger level to have the green sky. So I was doing a bunch of research to figure out, I just realized there's a misaligned texture and that drives me crazy. It's right there. Um, actually, yeah, that's, that, that drives me nuts. Anyways, um, I was doing a bunch of research to find like the, the, the scripting to change a skybox mid-level. And the idea was that any of the times you crossed any of the lines that allowed you to leave this area would shift the, the sky back to the standard sky. And then whenever you came into this area, it would shift it to the green so that in places where the player obviously wouldn't be able to see it. Uh, but I could never figure out how to do that. So it became a bit of a design roadblock for me. Um, and... Ultimately, when we got to the point where ramp was coming close, David messaged me and was like, hey, your map uh, is a work in progress. Uh, are you going to be able to have time to finish it? And I had to tell him, sadly, that I didn't. Um, and so that level sat un incomplete for an entire year until I cannibalized it for parts and turned it into these ramp levels. Uh, there is this area over here. Also, I want you to take a second to check out my jank ass diagonal crates. Look at the texture and look at how like offset it is. I am terrible at drawing things that are not at 90 degree angles. So, and like, this is just straight up the wrong texture on top of the box, but it is, uh, you know, you're never going to see that in normal standard play. I, I don't fully understand why I graded this off because while there is something down here, it's not like the player could get to it. So I don't know why I put an impassable mid texture here other than just maybe looks. The player can can already not get past the crates. It just looks nice. Hey, look at that. A uh, uh, trapezoid door. 
Always lovely. Ties it into the design language of the first couple of levels to have the to have the doors like that. Uh, this, I love, I don't know if you noticed playing this level. I love blocking off with bars and having you have to use a switch. That is something that has popped up in so many levels that I've designed. Um, that's probably the least flashy implementation because they're just, they all lower. The later bars are intertwined and some of them go up, some of them come down. That required uh, a little bit of scripting to do because it's it's running two, two actions off of the same line def, uh, the same switch. So, you know, but I love doing those bars. It just, I think it looks really, really cool. Um, it's, it's, to me, that is much more interesting than using a switch to open a door. Uh, because then you also get that tease of you can see where the yellow key is. You can see what's coming up. Uh, this is like the world's longest freaking elevator. Uh, I just liked having you wait for the elevator. This, so fun fact, this, uh, this sewer section, again, we can see the red door here, is almost an exact copy of the first level that I ever made. Like the, the first the first Doom level that I would call an actual level was a sewer like this with a U shape. Um, it, this is just like a, a version of it that is much better designed um, and shows a lot more detail work. And obviously you have stuff like the water level actually has depth and just, it's, it's like, this is one of those rooms that I keep I almost keep remaking it like every every six or seven months I find myself designing the same room, but it's, you know, better. It's, you know, because I've learned so much more since then, I've managed to improve upon it every single time that it pops up. It's almost like, uh, I don't know. It's almost like an obsession for me. I don't know why. I don't know why I uh, keep doing sewers, but it just keeps happening. Uh, all of these offshoot rooms, when you realize that you don't need to go into these off these offshoot rooms like at all, it is one of those sort of things where I'm allowing the player to explore and giving them areas that they don't necessarily need to, but it it just makes the environment feel more real. If there weren't if there weren't any of these offshoots, I don't know if I'd necessarily buy this area as a real thing and not just a video game level. Um, there is a line that we have to walk when it comes to uh, realism in video games, but I felt like this is this is a place where, you know, show a little bit, be a little bit more realistic and it's not going to hurt the, the game a little bit. I want to point something out. I do this, I do this quite a bit too, um, where if I have a section that like maybe I'm implying is supposed to be uh, elevated or supposed to move, in this case, this floor doesn't move, but you'll see that sometimes where I will have elevators go a unit or two higher than the surrounding floor or a unit or two lower than the surrounding floor. Just because it's like, okay, well, you know, whatever engineer was putting this in, was off by a little bit like their tolerance and their design was off by a little bit and it's just like it's just a little lip uh is it a noticeable detail that anyone else is gonna see besides me no but it it's that tiny that tiny little the tiny little detail that i have a lot of fun with um we got this megasphere down here this was i believe one of the first areas that i designed for this level was this little pool here that serves no real world purpose. I don't know why in a sewer there would just be a like deep closed off pool of sewage. But there just is. Remember what I was saying about balancing act of realism? Uh, this room also makes absolutely no sense in the context of like anything realistic, but shut up, it it's a doom level. Uh, this was kind of the big, this level, just in general is a lot of bigger action set pieces. It's because as we go through the three levels that I designed, we're slowly ramping up the action. 
Um, because again, I designed them almost to operate one after the other. You should play Dimensional Gateway into Incursion Point into Homecoming. Uh, so the action is getting a little bit more intense and the fights are getting a little bit, a little bit more aggressive. Uh, this room in here is a nice little bit of, at least I believe is a nice little bit of world building, a little bit of, um, explanation for things. Cause you notice down here in the sewers, there's a lot of crates. Ah, crap. I didn't mean to jump in there. Uh, there's a lot of crates down here and you're thinking, you're, you might be thinking to yourself, how... How do they get crates into the sewers? Uh, well, this room gives you an explanation. Because there is like a faux service elevator. Uh, and there's a lot more crates in here. So the idea when I designed this room is that that is answering the question that players probably have of why are there crates in the sewers? Like what's going on down here? Why is that happening? Well, in my head, some organization that is operating down here is using the sewer to like hide some nefarious items. And so they have like a, a freight elevator uh, that comes down here into the sewer. Just a little detail. It's It does nothing for the level, uh, but it's just, you know, small details. Makes it feel a little bit more lived in, a little bit more alive. Uh, and finally, we go through this teleporter and we're in this apartment complex. And this is, again, this is an area that was new for this level. I designed it specifically for ramp because I needed an ending that wasn't just hit the teleporter and you're over. Uh, and so I put in this like apartment complex-esque looking place. Uh, it, it has a few design features that honestly, I think I might steal for future levels, these lights. I love the the like little lights that are popping out. The light strips, I think it looks so cool. Uh, the archways, I'm super stoked with. And I just, I like the palette of this level because so many of my levels wind up being like dark gray and like brick and all this sort of stuff. Like this, this sort of tan location, it feels a lot lighter. Um, even though it's still grungy and brown, it just, it it feels a little bit warmer than my levels usually do. Um, here are those bars like I was talking about where I like blocking things off with bars. Uh, we have this green glowing whatever. I, uh, since I learned how to map from David, you'll notice that I do the whole like computer embedded in the wall a lot, which is something that he does a lot. So with these ramp maps, one thing was I was still doing that. Like, obviously, like you look at this, I'm still doing it, but I'm trying to work in more details like this thing here that it breaks up the monotony of the levels, but isn't just, you know, a computer embedded in a wall. It's a little bit, it's a little bit fancier. It's a little bit shinier. And the same with like the breaker boxes and stuff on the wall, just details that, you know, break things up, but aren't that aren't the same thing over and over. These things, I have no idea. I have no idea what's going on here. They look cool, but I don't know what practical service they provide other than just being a, a lighting fixture, I guess. They look cool though. Um, yeah, 3D floors, ladies and gentlemen. You can do all sorts of cool stuff like that light strip through the middle. Anyways, coming on down here, coming on down, coming on down. Again, not just a computer embedded in a wall as he goes through. And then we've got, you know, no co oh, computer embedded in a wall. There it is. Uh, we can have a roof where we can see the green toxic sky. We have these TVs. Something that I learned uh, shortly before working on this level is that we can tag so the way that 3D floors work in the editor is you tag a sector and then you have a line def that points to that sector and say like, hey, draw a 3D sector here. I learned that we can have multiple lines pointing to the same tag so that we can have 3D floors, like two 3D floors occupying the same space that have different vertical like information and different shapes and things of that nature. That's how I have TVs that are sticking out of the wall that aren't connected, uh, 
one on top of the each other, stacked on top of each other. Uh, that's also how I've done a few other tricks in previous levels you may have seen. Uh, yeah, see the the fancy like almost jaws opening up. Uh, yeah, I dig it. That's this is probably the most dumb use of 3D floor in the entire level. Uh, or in any of the levels that I've ever designed, this little stupid light here, because it's two uh, cylindrical sectors and then a 3D floor on top with the light sitting on these two legs. I thought it looked cool. Does it, it's, that took me, that light took me more time than the entire rest of this desk to do. Uh, I like that out of this window, we can see the city we got the the gross green we have the sky the buildings it's skyline that is not the the city that we were it's not the space in the city that we can see uh earlier on if we actually run out with no clip we will see it's just a bottomless pit into a void that actually scared the crap out of me uh and that this building is not textured actually it's just the wall texture but oop I almost found myself in the middle of a 3D floor, but we can go up on the on the rooftops and run around like Batman in Gotham. Uh, <laughs> I'm tired, can you tell? Uh, so yeah, that brings us to the end of the map. Uh, again, flipping the switch lowers the bars in the BFG room. Let's go in there and let's take a look at that area just a little bit. It's not nothing to stand out about it, but we do have a bigger uh, version of that Thing that's out in the hallway uh and these breaker boxes and uh, and a light because lights are lights cool there's no practical reason for that room to be there if this is like somebody's apartment why would they just have a randomly well you know what whatever don't think too hard about it uh but yeah so with that that is the end of homecoming and that is the end of my three maps that i created for ramp 2024 so now that that is all finished and everything is all all well and good, uh, I will just say to you that you should probably go check out Ramp. I will have a link to the website where you can download the Megawad. I will also have a link down there to David X. Newton's YouTube channel. He's the guy who puts together Ramp. You can go in there and you can check out uh, everything that you want in there. If you want to learn how to do Doom mapping the same way that I did, you can watch his videos. Uh, I might actually be putting out some Doom mapping tutorials of my own in the near future. I have some planned out, but I'm trying to decide if it's even really worth it. Because again, people like David X. Newton are out there teaching you how to map, and I don't know if I can necessarily do it better than him. Uh, but maybe I'll be able to bring my own John Aljets flair to Doom mapping and show you how to, how to map the Aljets way. Uh, but anyways, with that, that is where I will leave you, uh, with this video. I hope that you have a fantastic day. Be sure to like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. Only like 2% of people who watch my videos are subscribed. What the heck? That is abysmally bad. We should work on that. Let's try to see if we can at least get it to 50%. That would be a lot, but let's see if we can make it. Uh, so... As I said, that is where I will leave you. Go out, create something good, bad, ugly, beautiful. doesn't matter. Just get out and create because we need more people in the world making cool stuff. Cool stuff so that I can, like, I can, I can watch it or I can play it or, you know, I can consume all that cool stuff that you people are making. I need more, I need more good stuff. Uh, so, yeah, have a good one.